Electricity's pretty cool. Consider this. Electricity's done more to change our world than any other single technological advancement in human history. And it's managed to do all that in only about 150 years. That's pretty remarkable. Now a lot of people might say, no, 150 years isn't exactly the blink of an eye, and they'd be right. But I like to look at it this way. If one were to condense the entirety of our existence on this planet down into a single day, then electricity would only have been with us for about the last two minutes. That's pretty cool. The golden age for electromagnetic physics, most would say, took place back in the 1800s. That's when the electric force and the magnetic force were unified to become the electromagnetic force, which is what we know it as today. The framework for developing that unification came from physicists with names like Ampere, Gauss, Faraday, Maxwell, Lenz, and even Tesla. It would be almost impossible to overstate the degree to which our technology today is dependent upon the science that took place in the late 19th century. It is, however, easy to forget sometimes just how much our technology is dependent upon those scientists. I wanted to devise an experiment an experiment that would effectively showcase a technology that we take advantage of today, but only comes as a direct result of the science that took place back during that period of time. Perhaps an experiment which would show us something we're all familiar with and may even take for granted, but need to remember that it's only because of the hard work of those famous physicists that we get to enjoy the world we now live in. This is a microwave oven, and this is a radar gun. And although it may not look like either of those two, the fact is either of those two could be built by using nothing more than the parts you see on this table. There's a transformer, a capacitor, a diode, a cooling fan, a waveguide, and this inconspicuous looking item right here. This is what's known as a cavity magnetron. And the cavity magnetron is really the heart of the beast. But before we get into what a cavity magnetron is and how it works, we need to go back to the year 1895 when an unassuming physicist was about to derive a mathematical equation and change the world forever. Around the turn of the 19th century, a Dutch physicist by the name of Hendrik A. Lorentz was working on some math in an attempt to draw clarity to the unification of the electromagnetic force. Now Lorentz was a physicist who used to rub shoulders with the likes of Albert Einstein. It give you an idea just what kind of guy he was. The Lorentz force equation, as it's come to be known, could accurately predict the trajectory of a charged particle while that particle was under the influence of an electromagnetic field. In not so simple terms, it reads that the force exerted on a charged particle Q moving with velocity V through an electric field E and magnetic field B is the entire electromagnetic force on the charged particle, and it is called the Lorentz force, after the Dutch physicist Hendrik A. Lorentz. It is given simply by F is equal to QE plus QV cross B. Now the first term is contributed by the electric field itself. The second term is the magnetic force and has a direction perpendicular to both the velocity and the magnetic field. The magnetic force is proportional to Q 
and to the magnitude of the vector cross product V cross B. In terms of the angle phi between V and B, the magnitude of the force equals QVB sine of phi. Now an interesting result of the Lorentz force is the motion of a charged particle in a uniform magnetic field. If V is perpendicular to B, or with the angle phi between V and B of 90 degrees, then the particle will follow a circular trajectory with a radius of R is equal to MV over QB. What the heck does all that mean? Well, simply put, it means that if you stick an electron in an electric field, and there's a magnetic field perpendicular to the electric field, then the electron will be made to accelerate and move in circles. The cavity magnetron, or more simplistically the magnetron, is a high power vacuum tube capable of producing intense microwaves of short wavelength. Modern magnetrons are constructed primarily of a conductive metal such as copper and have an even number of small resonating cavities within the inner walls of their perimeter. A negatively charged high voltage electrode known as a cathode is centered within the interior of the vacuum chamber and the cathode is also coated with a material called barium oxide. Barium oxide is known to give off electrons when heated in a process called thermionic emission. A high voltage, negatively biased DC energy source is presented to the cathode and the barium oxide heated by a low voltage external source. Electrons are made to accumulate on the surface of the barium oxide and as a consequence emitted into the reaction space of the vacuum chamber. Under the influence of their own electric field and through the presence of an additional magnetic field made possible by the inclusion of two large permanent magnets, the electrons are accelerated and forced into a circular trajectory. This is the Lorentz force realized. The electrons then spiral outward toward the outer perimeter of the reaction chamber. As they pass the small cavities located on the outer perimeter, electrical resonations begin to occur within those cavities. These resonations occur as a result of the cavities behaving like small LC series circuits. A technique known as pie strapping interconnects alternate cavities together, which serves to parallel the individual resonant circuits into a unified whole. Because the electrons causing this production of energy to occur have no appreciable mass, and force is equal to mass times acceleration, the electrons reach enormous velocities. By the time they reach the outer perimeter of the vacuum tube, they are traveling at millions of miles per hour. This implies the frequency of the resonations taking place is also extremely high, 2.45 billion times per second, to be exact. The electromagnetic energy is then siphoned off the cavities by use of a conductive wire. A small antenna is located on the other end of this wire, whose characteristic impedance is set to match the source impedance of the cavities. As a result, the electromagnetic energy is made to detach from the antenna and become radiation. This radiation is then channeled by use of a waveguide and directed towards its desired destination. Microwaves are born. In 1940, the German Luftwaffe was conducting an effective bombing campaign over much of Europe. Cities like Birmingham, London, Liverpool, Manchester, and Southampton were among some of the hardest hit. The English desperately needed a way to detect the presence of the German aircraft before those aircraft could open their bomb bay doors. Well, lucky for the English, they had a couple of pretty smart physicists by the name of John Randall and Harry Boot both working out of the University of Birmingham at that time. Now Birmingham, just coincidentally enough, happened to be one of the cities that was hard hit by the German bombs. Boot and Randall got together and realized there must be a way to use the equation of Lorentz to their advantage. They needed a means by which to create high energy short wavelength microwave radiation, the kind used in radar, and to do that all from a small package. It was shortly thereafter that the first cavity magnetron was born. Now the cavity magnetron was undoubtedly an invention created by Randall and Boot, which helped the Allies to secure victory in World War II. But that's not where the story ends. Six short years later, in 1946, 
an American physicist by the name of Percy Spencer, while working with the newly developed radar technology, realized that some chocolate he had in his pocket had melted when he was in the vicinity of the radar. He was quick to put two and two together and realized that it was the microwave energy itself from the radar which had caused the chocolate to melt. Being as much of an entrepreneur as he was a physicist, the first microwave oven was born. And so too was the first millionaire physicist. Getting back to the experiment I wanted to conduct, I was thinking it might be better expressed as more of a demonstration than it would be an experiment. A demonstration on the production of microwaves by use of a cavity magnetron. That cavity magnetron made possible by the creative genius and inventive nature of guys like John Randall, Harry Boot, Percy Spencer, and Hendrik Lorentz. But rather than use that magnetron to detect the speed of a car coming down the road or to warm a plate of pasta in my kitchen, I thought I'd use it in a way that we may not be familiar with, a way that may seem almost magical. I'd like to take a compact fluorescent light bulb, much like this one, and place it about three feet away from the microwave emitter. The magnetron will then be powered up and the bulb irradiated by microwaves. Gas inside of the light bulb will be made to vibrate back and forth very quickly, 2.45 billion times a second to be exact. This will in turn cause the bulb to emit photons of its own that fall within the wavelength of visible light. As a result, the bulb should seem to self-illuminate without the use of any wires or external source of energy. Like magic. Let's watch and see what happens. Well, I guess that about wraps it up. From a mathematical equation, to the winning of a world war, to a melted bar of chocolate, to this bag of popcorn. I'm now enjoying the fruits of labor. Labor which was provided by the brilliant minds and creative geniuses of days gone by. And this is really just one of thousands of examples which could be made directly connecting the technology we enjoy today to those great minds of the past. Which really just leaves me with one question. Do you think Lorenz would have liked microwave popcorn? <laughs> <laughs>